Okay, ladies, I am so sorry. I had recorded the uh, what I thought I had recorded, the steps on how to get to this uh, particular part, but it did not record. So I'm going to tell you exactly how I did it. I got my Barbie doll. Of course, I got I stripped her of her clothes and everything, and then I wrapped her in saran wrap. And I wrapped her in the areas that I knew I wanted to paper mache on uh, this paper here onto her body to make the bodice. Okay. And I made clear and I tried to make um, very, uh, you know, make her waist, cinch her waist in and to create uh, the pivots around the breast area to make sure it's defined when you do take this off of your uh, Barbie. Now it's very important that you put your saran wrap on first because that will allow your bodice once it's dry to release. You do not have to take the saran wrap onto your Barbie. In fact it just wraps around very well like it does a lid on you know like a bowl or whatever. So, and then what I had done was, is I had mixed uh, one, uh, one part water, two parts Elmer's glue, just good old fashioned Elmer's school glue, and I had dipped uh, the pieces of paper in there and applied each one um, to the bodice, you know, like this, applied each one to the bodice. I let it dry for a good eight hours. And um, and now and then after it dried in eight hours, I put two coats of Mod Podge on the bodice, and this is just to help strengthen it. So now with it dry, and it's it's very pliable. It's uh, because the two, the uh, Saran wrap has allowed that to happen. So now what I'm fixing to do is release it from the Barbie doll. Okay. And I'm going to use a, a sharp knife and I'm just going to go straight down the back here all the way down. And I think I'm going to do scissors. Let me get some sharp, sharp scissors. Okay. And I'm just releasing take your time with this step because this will help finish curing it. Saran wrap is hard to cut through, so just be patient with it. All right, now you should be able to gently release the bodice. From the body. Okay, so you're going to gently release the bodice, and if the edges on the back here are a little ragged, don't worry about that. We are going to let this completely dry fully, and I'm just going to Snip this on around so I can release it. Okay. Now this is the way I'm doing it. I'm sure there are other ways that you can do it, but I don't want to ruin the Barbie and because I want to be able to use her again okay 
there we go and there we have our beautiful bodice look it released and now you just take off the saran wrap from your Barbie and begin another See, I just wrapped her in pieces and now she's perfect and ready for another dress and in the meantime while this is still a little damp it's pretty dry it's still damp on the inside so right now would be a good time to take your scissor and you're going to clean up the edges right now while it's still kind of um, damp okay and then I'm going to hit it with a heat gun on the inside okay just clean up the edges like so there we go and across the top here I'm going to clean up the edges as well like that so there we have a beautiful vintage bodice that uh, was on the Barbie doll and you wrapped it in saran wrap and now I'm just going to hit the inside with a heat gun to help dry it Now, I want to hit the inside, since I dried what little moisture was left, I do want to hit the inside with another coat of Mod Podge. This will only wind it to be that much stiffer and that much stronger. And that is exactly what you want. Okay? So just take it and be gentle with it and hit the inside. Don't spread it open and do it. You're just going to hit the inside as best you can with your brush. You should be able to do that if you allowed it to have that much time to cure like that. And if you want, you can hit it on the outside again, like this. And I'm just going to leave it setting up like that. And I'm going to let it dry maybe another hour to air dry. I think if you try to dry something too fast and you get anxious, um, it can lend to some not so desirable results um, so um, what I'm going to do is allow this to dry for another hour on the inside but that is the bodice and I'm going to show you just what else I'm going to do 
I'm going to trim this off while it's still, yep, there we go. So I'm going to show you how I am going to um, make an art dress from this bodice. So uh, while this is drying, I'm going to go over the steps with you, what I've done. I took my Barbie, um, just as she is. Um, I didn't put any kind of lubricant on her or anything to hold the, the saran wrap. You just get plain old saran wrap, uh, plastic wrap, and get it at the dollar store. This clear plastic wrap. And you just get you off a piece here. And what I do, the first areas that I start are across the breast and the waist because the breast has got to be formed to where it can you know you can distinguish um, her breast area and then you're going to wrap her waist and I wrap halfway down her body because I know it's going to get messy and there's going to be a lot of uh, glue residue dripping and as you can see I'm taking my fingers and I'm just molding her body with the plastic okay and again this Sell this uh, plastic wrap protects her and allows you to release your paper mache bodice so easily as you saw before. So that's what you would do and you would wrap her, you know, probably a good two or three times. Make sure you pay attention to the, the neck area here on how high you want it, how high you want your bodice or how low. Um, definitely cover the breast area and try to pay attention to the cleavage area um, and keep in mind with it like right in here like I did I kind of left it flat but you still saw her breast area and when you do put your paper on you're going to have to pleat it um, and pleat around the breast area and pinch it and you'll know what I mean when you start working with the paper um, it's a good idea to soak your paper pieces for like uh, a good 30 seconds or so so they become really pliable and um, and just glue them on there um, and you can actually return this uh, glue um, concoction into a, a jar with a good lid and you can use it for next time so um, it takes a little time to mold the paper on there the way you want but what the fun part is is that you get to use any kind of paper you want you can use tissue paper you can use napkins you can use uh, uh, printed paper like I did and you basically just decoupaging the pieces onto the dress to form uh, the bodice now as you see here because I knew what type of dress I wanted to make if you as you see here on this bodice I went across her neck, done the breast area, and this is her waist area, but I went down over her hips. And what this lends me to do when I do create my dress uh, or my skirt for my bodice is that I have a good half inch to glue my skirt onto. So that's another thing you need to think about. It's like a, you know, a long corset. So you need to at least... Uh, when you get your Barbie, you need to at least paper mache, I'd, I'd say, a good inch down onto her hips. And that allows you to have that much more room uh, to put your skirt on for your dress. Okay? And once this is dry, you are welcome to paint the inside of it um, if you want to. Uh, because... This bodice, this dress is going to be hung by itself as if it's a, on a display um, in a little store. And I'm hoping to make a, a, like a series of them because um, I am just like a Barbie fanatic. So um, I really, really love Barbie and everything. And I love making outfits and dresses, especially dresses, uh, for uh, these dolls. And... Um, I thought this would be a beautiful way to make a paper mache corset type dress and very vintage and very um, in style. So um, I will show you how I'm going to create the stand that this Barbie dress will hang from and also of course the Barbie dress. So 
uh, I'm going to let this dry and then when I come back I'm going to show you what I'm going to create with the bodice. I will be back. Okay, when building the bottom of your skirt or any dress form or anything, you always have a king can and king cans are normally made of tool or a, uh, a some sort of webbing and that's exactly what I am going to use here is this white tool and I'm gathering it like this I'm making loops like this and I'm making three at a time and what I want to do is I'm going to stick it up inside the bodice here and I'm going to take my tiny attacher and I'm going to attach it with staples across the bottom. I'm doing this because I know I'm going to be covering a majority of this. So next you're going to make three more loops. Three more. Okay. You got your three more loops. You're going to stick them right up into the bodice. Again, taking the tiny attacher. This is a Tim Holtz um, tiny attacher. It's great for projects like this, the little ones. And did I run out of staples? Yep. Never fails. Always run out when I need them. But no worries. I have a new pack. Um, these are tiny staples and they're great for projects like this and attaching a smaller um, items onto like little tags and stuff like perfect for um, attaching ribbons and stuff to your projects. Now what I'm doing here is I'm simply building a can can inside the bodice. Okay, so I'm going to make three more loops. These dresses can be made in a number of ways. Um, you can dress them in oodles of ways. And this just happens to be one of them. And you're just going to shove it up in there like that. And you're going to give it a nice little Okay. And then on this side as well. We're going to do a little bit more on this side. I'm really filling up the bottom because I really want my dress poofy. I want a poofy dress, much like a wedding dress. And you're just going to scrunch it up in there and give it a staple. So. It doesn't matter if the uh, tool is uneven because it is going to be covered. Okay, and then you're just going to snip off the little piece. Now you're like, okay, I'm left with all these loops. Well, first you want to make sure that all of your tool is in there securely. So when you go to pulling it, it 
it will be okay. So what I do is I grab it like this and I just snip it off even like that. And now I have a, a poof like this. If I see I still have a few of the loops that are shorter than the ones, than the other ones, then I just trim those. And then I lay it down like this and I just give it a trim. Like so. Alright. So, now my bodice has um, the uh, tool underneath and it's been attached with a tiny attacher and also what this does as well is this also gives the bodice uh, fullness down at the bottom and more stability when you have pushed the tool up inside the uh, bodice there okay make sure you're seeing this okay all right so I have picked out some beautiful laces um, that I'm going to play with here to make my dress. Now, you can do one of two things. You can leave your bodice like it is or you can cover it. Um, it's mainly, you, the bodice is for a pattern um, to wrap your dress around or to um, create around or you can paint it and I think I'm going to paint mine because I want my dress to be very wet-any. I want it to be, um, you know, remind you of a wedding dress. So. I'm going to get out some acrylic paints. And see, so you can hold it with the tool. And just cover the bodice. Like so. And I'll show you how to do the closure in the back. Again, you can paint the inside. Like I suggested. Okay. I'm not going to put two or three coats on here. I think one coat will be sufficient because it's going to be covered with lace and I think it's just going to be just fine like it is. Okay. Now, of course, you can leave yours um, the paper you chose. That's up to you. Okay. There we go. I'm going to hit this with a heat gun to set it.
Now, on the closure here, I'm going to run a bead of hot glue. Now, you can, uh, if you want to make it look more of a corset, you can punch your holes on each side and lace it up. But in this instant, I am simply gluing it together at the moment. And then I will accentuate the closure once I have my lace um, put on there. Okay. And you're just going to gently press it closed. There we go. Okay. So, now I want to lay the lace and what I like to do first when working with my laces here is to kind of give an idea now what I'm going to do I'm going to get me some more tool You might want to think about doing this too. You're going to grab up some tool. Okay. And you're going to stuff the bodice with it. Okay. If you need to, pull some of it out and snip it off. Now, what this is going to do is this is going to keep your bodice to hold shape okay that's pertinent to what you want to do okay I just shoved I just fill it with tool like that now I like the little V part here that is naturally in the lace right here Okay, and I'm going to start getting a general idea here. You want to get about, let me cut off a good seven inches here. Now this is the tedious part and simply what you're going to do is you're just going to work your lace around or your materials around the bodice and that's exactly what I'm going to do and um, so the video is going to speed up and it's going to show this process that I'm doing here okay and then you'll well I'll, I'll come in when I need to and explain to you the next steps but uh, the next parts of the video are going to be speeded up to show you the process of me applying layers and layers of lace
Okay, what I've done so far is I have double layered um, a beautiful uh, lace all over the bodice here and I've done it in sections and then I took some of my uh, bling and pearl trim um, that's available in my store and I made it as a buttons make it look like it was the buttons going down the bottom now uh, starting at the hip section here I wrapped a piece of beautiful lace leaving a tail at the bottom um, and it it holds and it actually can stand up like this <laughs> It's very stiff because the tool underneath um, is allowing it to do that. Now, I have taken the time to hand uh, do a running stitch um, with this particular lace that is the same on the bodice. And right now, I'm just kind of spreading it apart um, so that I can wrap it around my dress. Now. I want to create a ruching here on the side of the dress okay and I'm wanting to right now I'm figuring out how I want to do that and I think I just did so I'm gonna go across here I'm gonna uh, glue my ruching starting and I'm going to glue it right there in front of the what it's supposed to be the hip okay then I'm going to bring it on around to the back like this just like that okay now I'm going to do another glue stitch now I will be layering um, I will be doing another um, layering of this on top of here to help fill in this gap here just like that and as I go I'm pulling just a little bit and I still have my needle and thread attached to it okay so I'm gonna go on around my dream was when I was sewing to be a wedding dress uh, designer and I thought because I just love the materials that are used to make wedding dresses see now that's going to lay like that okay then I'm going to sew another row and go on around so I am going to snip off my needle and thread and I'm going to use some more here and I'm going to finish this up. All right, I will be back with another section of this uh, trim here. Okay, um, I've changed it up just a little bit because um, my ruching wasn't exactly the way I wanted it. So, I'll show you exactly what it did. Snip that away. Um, I brought it up on the side here uh, to set the ruching to set on the hip right here. And then I cascaded it down like this. And I haven't tacked it down. 
um, I wanted to show the different variations of lace right here. Um, I have made another um, ruching here. Um, and I think I'm going to use it. My needle fell off. Let me put my needle back on. Uh, when making these, um, they're, just use your imagination. A good uh, idea of what, of how you can get some ideas is go look at wedding dresses on Google. Um, or bridesmaids dresses or prom dresses you know look at their styles and see if you can implement it um, in your wedding design or your design of your um, dress form um, gather inspiration from places like that and uh, you'll get a uh, uh, awesome idea of what you want. Now I'm trying to throw my needle here. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. There we go. Good. All right. Some of it come undone. So I gotta do a running stitch Whoop. my dress fell over I gotta finish doing this running stitch here okay now I'm just going to tie a knot at the end of this so that it won't completely get away from me. Okay, so here is some more of that trim. Now, I have the option of either putting it underneath. I might do because I like that it gives it more fullness and you can still see my ruching underneath so I'm going to tack it right here really quickly okay and then make sure that I have it on around like that Because I'm going to <laughs> Yeah, I can I'm allowed to do that. <laughs> okay, let's try this again. <laughs> starts right here okay so this is going to start right here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pin it
then I'm going to go all the way around back around here like that back around to this part of the ruching there we go these are supposed to be fun you know I mean you don't have to be so precise and it's not like somebody's wearing it um, but you need to you know me it would drive me nuts if I didn't have it just right I would piddle and pick at it and piddle and um, you know until I got it right okay now I'm going to go around and make sure everything is laying where it's supposed to and it looks like it is Okay, so now I can lift this up and pin, unpin it and glue it. Now I don't glue all the way around, I tack glue um, areas because I want it to lay naturally and now right here where the ruching is see where it leaves the opening right there I'm going to put something so now it goes all the way around like this see? all the way around like that then you have the beautiful I'm gonna make a, a train okay so now we have this um, this trim here from the lace to tin to so I'm just going to tack this there okay and going to take it and pack it some more if you have to you can pinch it like this and get it to um, you know adhere to the dress like that go from underneath and press It's so pretty. It's turning out to be beautiful. Okay. Now, nah. I'm just throwing right around some ideas right at the moment. I've got to figure out what I want to put underneath uh, the ruching area there. Now, of course, you can go really far out and, like, do a lot of, you know, do that, but that's just too much. Um, I 
I think what I want to do. You want to find a trim that will look good, you know, underneath there. And what I'm going to do right now is trim back some of this chiffon on the edging here and tack down where I need to. What this is going to do, it's going to help me find a trim that I can put along the edges here. And I'm going to have to dig into my trims and see what I have. Okay. I'll be back with uh, a different style of trims to finish the ruching and the design around the uh, skirt. Okay, I'm back and I have gathered some different things that I wanted to try. Um, again, this is completely um, your personal taste. Um, if what you want to do. Um, this was a bow that I tore apart. See, it went like that. Um, and I cut it apart. I cut both of the ends off and I left the center. Now, option number one is we can do it this way. And I was thinking maybe you know, um, kind of fanning it like that to where it didn't look like a bow, but it was still, you know, kind of like that. And then putting this in the center, and then this will get covered with a piece of my bling you know so I don't know yet also I thought okay what about taking some of these darling little things and having them cascade down like that underneath the dress on one side, Let's see. underneath the dress on one side where the ruching is, and then putting that or one of those. Now, for the trim, I think I'm going to go ahead and put the trim on. For the trim, I'm doing this all the way around. Okay? So, I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to snip it off right there. That should be enough. Okay, so here we go. And I'm going to start right here. I'm just going to put it around. And I'm going to press it in as I go. Glue. I hate the glue webs. Okay. 
Okay. We're going to press as we go in. Press, press, press. Slightly, and we'll bring it up like this. I love making dresses. I could just see my daughter in something like this. Okay, I'm going to snip it off right there because my ruching is going to go right there. I need to pull that. There we go. Now that's beautiful. Okay, see how pretty that is. Gorgeous. I think I'm gonna go with this. What I first thought of. I think it's gonna look the best. And then just put this right there. Yeah, it's going to look the best. So I'm just going to do it like that. Kind of a fan type deal. Then uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to peel off, clip off some of these pearls so that my bling will sit beautifully on there. Okay, I'm going to glue this onto there like that. And now it's time to find the perfect piece of bling. Okay. Wonder something. I'm gonna try something, girlfriends. All right. All I want mainly is the dangle part right there, and I want my bling to lay flat. So I just clipped off the rest of that button, and now. Yeah, my bling. I still have lost and found uh, bling in my store that has this piece in it. Yes, I do. Now, see, I made my own paper mache bodice, 
and my own dress with a beautiful motif here on the side. I just love that. And now I'm going to see about something. Hmm. Now, sometimes you just need just a little bit, but not too much. And... I want to do a little bit of designing on the bodice. I want to put some pearl or something there. I don't know. But that's basically what you're doing. You're just um, decorating and uh, playing and um, more or less creating your own designs. I'm gonna I think what I'm gonna do is just trim this off even because I don't want it to interfere with the beauty of the piece I want to think a little bit more on the uh, front of the bodice but you've gotten the basic general idea of how to um, create your own and um, and how you can um, make it beautiful and just have fun with it uh, I think that might be too much I think I might add some uh, beading, maybe right here, some pearl beading throughout the bodice here. I don't know yet. I have to sit and look at it. But if you have any questions on any of the steps that I have shown you, just let me know. And uh, I would be more than happy to ask, answer them for you. Um, but this is what it looks like so far. It's a beautiful dress. Um, put a little motif there. A piece of my bling. And as you go around, you have the bling down the back, like that. And then, you have it right there. Just beautiful pearls all the way around. I think it turned out stunning, just absolutely gorgeous. It's going to look so pretty with my shabby chic stuff. So if you make one of these dresses, um, tag me in the video. I'd love to see your um, take on your, I'd love to see your dress. And um, tag me in the video or tag me in the photo of it. And uh, be sure to share this video with people that like to make things like this and see if this is something they would like to try and do. If you have any questions about setting up your bodice on how to get it to be paper mache, um, let me know. And uh, stay after for detailed pictures. And until next tutorial, ladies, bye-bye.